Obviously, it was a bit surreal. I mean, dream of moments like that. Score at Stratford End. A career-defining moment, perhaps, for 18-year-old Kobe Maynu. Maybe I don't express it, but I'm definitely excited when I score goals like that. My guest today are two teenage forces of nature who in a season of fire and rain have soared to reveal themselves as footballing maverick and roosters. Two of the greenest, most potent shoots of optimism in the entire Premier League. Honestly, a joy to welcome for a conversation about being two of the most luminous young footballers in the global spotlight. From Manchester United, it's Kobe Mainu and Alejandro Garnaccio. Hi, thanks for having us. Hello, thank you. You both developed in the Manchester United youth system. Alejandro, since 2020. Cobby, you were nine years old when you arrived. Could you both describe the other and the style of the play? Starting with Cobby, how would you describe what you see of Alejandro on the field? If you were to describe what he does, what would you say? He's fast, direct, unpredictable if you're a defender. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what you're going to get each time he runs at you. Are you just like, oh my God, I can't believe he just did that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Especially with some of the goals he scores. We'll talk about them, and I am an Everton fan. <laughs> Alejandro, in your words, describe Kobe Maynard and his playing style. Yeah, he's very strong. He's so good on the ball, you know, dribbling. Uh, now he's scoring goals also, very good goals. Unbelievable, you know. He is unbelievable, and I will talk about that goal. But let's talk about one of yours, a singular moment of the season. November 2023, third minute against Everton. Diogo Dalot crossed deep into the box. The ball's behind you. Tell us what happened next. You reach behind with that right leg. Alejandro, did you think about what you were doing, or was it all automatic? People who know me know uh, I always in training and in the academy try to do this type of goals because I have the capability. So I seen the ball behind me and I didn't think about another thing. I, as I said, I, I have to try because I know how to do. If it's a goal, it's okay. If not, no worries. So I tried and great ball goal. Yeah. By the way, as you bicycled that ball into the top corner, and you ran off to celebrate. What emotions do you feel inside? When I was running to celebrate, I didn't know what I have to do now. I don't know. I, I'm like <laughs> in shock, you know. And then I did the, the celebration. And during the game, I was thinking about this all the game, you know. Were you just giggling? Were you just the rest of the game? Were you just like, oh God, I can't believe I just did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, just give me the puskus right now. <laughs> Alejandro, I've got to say, I am an Everton fan. So I did want to know, if you had 10 chances to make that shot in a game, how many of those 10 do you think you'd actually score? Again, no goals. <laughs> <laughs> no goals. <laughs> Maybe two or three, I, I did good the, the bicycle kick because I know how to do, but score the same goal is impossible. Copy. you also have the ability to score divine goals. Last weekend, Old Trafford against a rampant Liverpool team your arch rivals, your team scored two sublime goals to shell shot your opponents. And Cobby, 67th minute, Aaron Wambasaka fed you in the box. I think there's three defenders near you. You had your back to goal. Tell me what went through your mind as you took possession and then span around and leased a shot that was a human truth. Once I took the touch, it fell nice. And so I um, thought the keeper wouldn't expect me to take the shot. So I tried to whip it far post and yeah, it came off. You're very chill about the whole thing. That was your first ever goal at Old Trafford against your arch rival. You're a local lad, Manchester United supporter. You've been at the club for over half your life. As you ran to the corner to salute, I didn't score the goal and my blood was pumping. Tell me what went through your mind. What did you experience? I don't know, obviously it was a bit surreal. I mean, dream of moments like that, score at Stratford End and run to the corner. But maybe I don't express it, but I'm definitely excited when I score goals like that. <laughs> I saw my cousin in the crowd, so that's who I saluted to. You could see your cousin? Yeah, yeah, my cousin and my mum jumping up and down. It's amazing. Yeah. That really is like the stuff that dreams are made of. I've got to ask you, when you span around, before you shot the ball, Alejandro was right by you yeah. and there's some debate amongst Manchester United fans were you aware that he was near you and with your right arm did you wave him off? No I didn't wave him off I knew he was, I knew he was near me because I could see him asking for the ball there but I didn't wave him off I just knew I wanted to take the shot Alejandro's like bicycle kick just chip it up baby you were like <laughs> nah I got this one Nah I didn't wave him off but I just knew I had to take the shot 
Goals against Liverpool, locking down the starting role at United. You were called up to the English national team within 118 days of your United debut. Cobby, I mean, you are a very chill external persona, but inside, are you like, yeah, this is all going to plant? Or does part of you feel like you were living in a quasi-dream world too? I mean, I feel like the games just come so fast that you don't really get time to stop and think about what you're doing or take it all in because otherwise we'll move on without you. So I feel like I just have to keep my mind on the next game or the next session to just keep me ticking over until I don't know when but just keep on doing that <laughs> does anything phase you man or are you just like so locked in at this moment in your career that you don't experience human fear but I just try and um, perform I mean every game every game there's a lot of big games coming up to the end of the season so I just have to try and keep a level head and keep on performing Cobby for your part February 1st a real moment of human wonder in this season 7th minute of stoppage time score tied 3-3 against Wolves curving grass cutter sealed all three points at the very death and afterwards you posted a video truly human moment hi Daniel Cobby here I saw your message on Twitter and was really touched by your story I'm really sorry about the passing of your father I'm glad you could share such a special moment together and I could play a small part in that. I wanted to invite you and your son to a game soon at Old Trafford so we'll get in touch and get everything sorted. Stay strong and I'll see you soon. I watched it, I was like, oh my God, that kid has got a maturity. Uh, I mean, I can't believe he's just still a teenager. You responded to a fan who'd lost his father to cancer. One of the last memories together was watching your delirious goal and you ended up bringing the fan to Old Trafford to watch a game. And fascinating, how often do you get messages like this from fans and what moved you to respond to exactly that one? Yeah, I mean, obviously we get a lot of messages from fans, but I'd... Um... A lot of people had sent me that one from, from Twitter. It was, I'm not on Twitter, but uh, a lot of people had sent me it. Thought it was definitely a touching moment, so I, I thought I had to, to reach out and send a video over because to be a part of a moment like that between a father and son, it's, it's incredible. So When you saw the impact the message had on the family, what did that make you feel, Cobby? Happy that I could be a part of a memory for them. And um, yeah, I feel like it was the least I could do. To me, honestly, in that story, Cobby, that is what football is really about the the memories that are made that you guys are both making between family generations. Um, but that next game, another memory, 3-0 win over West Ham. Rasmus Hoyland opened the scoring on his 21st birthday. Alejandro scored the other two. And after the second goal, you two and Hoyland sat up on the advertising boards. The image, it's one of the, I think for most United fans, the fondest of the season. Three bright talents, really the most optimistic image of this club. Beam me up from your perch. Looked like the three of you had barely a concern in the world. What did you turn and say to each other sitting up there in that moment? I don't remember saying anything. I mean, <laughs> I think you're just all enjoying <laughs> the moment, really. Yeah, it was a good goal, so celebration had to match it. What did it feel like to sit up there? Alejandro, can you put into words to sit by Rasmus, to sit by Cobby, to know that the three of you together have the world at your feet in that moment? What does it feel like? Tell us mere mortals. Just incredible. Uh, you know, I wanted to do this celebration, just me, but then I seen Kobe <laughs> and Rasmus coming with me. So we did the, the picture and then we go to the tenure room and we show the picture. Like, oh, wow, like the three youngest we are playing now together. It's an incredible picture and it will be an iconic one if we made some big things for, for the club, you know. To the two of you, to your friendship, uh, to the joy that you bring, um, to your continued success. Thank you, gents. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias.